my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie E. This is Ravenclaw, and you're watching. Created by the wonderful Bookish Paradise, although I was tagged by the princess over at Castle Library. So this tag is all about vacations. The first part of it is a vacation flashback. Talk about one of your favorite places that you've ever traveled to. Who did you go with? What did you do there and why was it so memorable? So I'm gonna to talk to you about my Euro trip that I took in 2016. I had never left the country before and I'd always wanted to go to Europe ever since I was a little kid. I ended up going to Sweden, Iceland, Italy, Denmark, and Spain. I decided to go to Europe completely by myself on my own dime with nobody to guide me and it was one of the most liberating, empowering experiences I've ever had. The first stop was Denmark and I did a work exchange for a couple months and I worked at this yoga retreat center in exchange for free room and board. It was one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had. The community was really, really friendly and it was all about like clean eating and health. And it was a really good start to the rest of my European tour because I felt like it really grounded me and kind of set me off with high hopes for the rest of the vacation. And then from then on, I went up and met with a friend in Iceland. We spent five days there. It was beautiful. We went to the Blue Lagoon, a black sand beach. We just had an absolute blast. The last leg of my trip was Italy. I spent three beautiful weeks in Florence. I had actually gotten super lucky because a friend was studying abroad in Florence and she was in England for the summer with her boyfriend. So I got to stay in this beautiful high-rise apartment for free. I absolutely fell in love with Florence, like the canals, um, the food, the culture. I, I actually know Florence like the back of my hand now and I ate so much food. It just, it was a blast. I really fell in love with myself in that city and with the city's magic. I loved all of the history and the museums and architecture. You can really feel the age of the city when you walk along its streets. There was something very, very magical about that. Question number one, an expensive book or edition that you own, was it worth it? I actually pick up most of my books from the local library and the books that I do have came either from college or moved with me to Minnesota from when I was a kid. However, I am a really big fan of purchasing graphic novels and comics, so those are definitely the most expensive books that I own, but each of them on their own is only between $4 and $20. Question number two, packing your luggage. Name a book that had a busy but organized plot. The book that I'm gonna pick for this one is All These Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Clefworth. The book came out in the summer of 2018 and is about Charlie Calloway, a teenager who is attending a very prestigious prep school, but she has a really troubled past. Her mother disappeared when she was just seven years old. She ran off with a bunch of money, leaving no explanation, and Charlie never got closure with her. On top of that, at her school, she just got admitted into this super secret society called the A's, and in order to actually join the society, she has to participate in and all of these dangerous challenges that can get her not only expelled but arrested and possibly put in jail. She finds out that her mother's disappearance was a lot more ominous than she originally was led to believe and so she begins to explore that aspect of her history. And then if that's not enough for you, the book switches vantage points between Charlie, Charlie's mother, and Charlie's father. The passages written by Charlie's mother and father happened 10 years ago from where the story is currently taking place. So the book isn't linear, there's a lot going on in the present and in the past, and then you have multiple vantage points, but I think that Elizabeth Clefworth did a beautiful job of balancing all of those elements of the story while defining and developing her characters and then having those characters interact with each other. It was one of the most well-balanced, exciting uh, books that I've ever read and I wish I could read it again for the first time. Um, I can't wait to see more from this author. Question number three, everyone's least favorite part of flying, the security check. Name a book that you have heavily annotated the most. That book is going to be The Negro Civil War, which is about how American blacks felt and acted during the Civil War. Now I'm thinking about airport security, so I'm just gonna tell you the story. Every single time I have gone to the airport within the last two years, my hair has been searched. And it is so humiliating and annoying and fucking frustrating. Like, what the fuck do you think I'm hiding in my hair? Like once I saw a lady in front of me like go through airport security and she had a giant bun but like her hair wasn't kinky and they let her go by but like I get my hair searched all the time. 
Like, I know that there's a lot going on in here, but it's not a matter of national security. Trust me. The Civil War, as well as African American chattel slavery, just wasn't covered very well in my school. And so I didn't really learn about what slavery actually was, what it consisted of, until I went to college. And this book was one of the books that really opened my mind about what Africans went through in this country. And I'm just going to read you this quote by Frederick Douglass. Prejudice always blinds to what it never wishes to see, and quick to perceive all it wishes, sees the whole race in the character of our worst representatives, while it has no eyes for our best. Question number four is airport meal. Name a book character that you would like to have lunch with and why. Oh, I'm sorry, not and why, and what questions would you ask? I can read, okay. So the character that I would most like to have lunch with comes from Victor Laval's Destroyer, and her name is Josephine Baker. And I have no idea if Josephine Baker is somewhat based off of the dancer, actress, singer Josephine Baker, but she's absolutely incredible. So if you don't know the background to the Destroyer comics, it's about the last son of Frankenstein, and he is killed by police when he's just 12 years old. And his mother is a brilliant scientist who resurrects him and brings him back to life. This comic is one of the most intelligent and well-balanced comics. You have beautiful but subtle social commentary about police brutality in America, themes of resurrection, reimagining of the Frankenstein story and who doesn't love a good retelling. Um, and then you have a mother's love. What wouldn't a mother do for her son? After Josephine brings her son back to life, she has a whole other mess of challenges that she faces. And a lot of that means that she has to create more technology to protect herself and her son. I absolutely love a strong female heroine. I love the fact that we have a comic that features a black family as the center of the story. Josephine Baker reminds me a lot of Tony Stark. So if you're into his character, you're definitely gonna love hers. And more importantly, the destroyer, the little boy at the center of the story is not only intelligent, but he's compassionate and charming and loving and just super, super sweet. He's one of the most gentle characters um, that I've ever read, but he's also very formidable and has the great dedication and resolve that most children are born with. Question number five, airport souvenirs. Name a book that you have multiple copies of. I do love to purchase single issues of comics and spread them out. Wicked and Divine, I have multiple copies of these comics. And then Kim and Kim, I have multiple copies of these comics as well. I just love spreading them around. The art in the stories are so beautiful, but the characters themselves are fantastic. And I love how much representation there is for people of color, queer folks. And for those of you who don't know, The Wicked and the Divine is about gods that resurrect themselves every 90 years. And each time they're resurrected, they come back as what is popular at the time. What do we worship more in our modern day and age than our celebrities? That means that the gods are being born as modern day pop stars. So the book is about all of these different pop star gods and their antics and amazing, formidable powers. And the ways that these gods are drawn is so beautiful and intoxicating that I can't pull my my eyes from the page. I love the things that we find out about them as time goes and the way that their characters change and develop. Question number six symbolizes airport turbulence. Name a book that made you nervous or anxious. And once I read this question, I knew exactly which book I was gonna pick. And that is gonna be In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. I know a lot of people weren't into this book. They said that it was too slow for them, it wasn't scary enough, nor the main character was boring. And personally, I don't agree with any of that. So the story is about Nora, who is a recluse 26 year old writer, and she receives an invitation to her ex-best friend's bachelorette party out in the woods. She hasn't seen her best friend for 10 years. They had a falling out that you find out about later in the story. So she goes out into this cabin in the middle of the woods and a murder takes place. And Nora was injured and she wakes up in the hospital and is an unreliable narrator throughout the story as you slowly find out and piece together what happened. Furthermore, she's still in very real and present danger. I love the way that Ruth Ware played with past and present. I'm always impressed with a very unreliable narrator. I love finding things out as the story goes on, which is typically why third person narration and omnipotent narration doesn't impress me. Personally, I related a whole lot to Nora as somebody who is 26 and is very much of a recluse. And I feel like the reasoning behind why her character is so private 
and guarded was completely believable. And also, I don't need a book to have crazy amounts of action. I just needed to have believable action that makes me feel something. And more importantly, I had a very physical reaction to reading this book. I know a lot of people said that it wasn't thrilling enough. Ruth Ware did a fantastic job of capturing suspense because she damn sure had me on the edge of my seat. Question number seven, landing. Give us your most anticipated book release of the year. For this, I'm going to give you The Lingering by S.J.I. Holiday. This book is about married couple Jack and Allie Gardner whose relationship is in trouble. In order to save their marriage, they move to a self-sustaining commune in rural England. They find out that the commune used to be a violent psychiatric facility. I love a good horror story, especially because I'm about to be doing Spooktober, and so I'm really anticipating this book. The second I found out that the commune was a psychiatric facility that had a disturbing history, I would have vanished. Whoa, I guess our marriage is over. Fuck it. I'm one of those people that gets very frustrated when people don't leave situations in which there's clearly a haunting or some force or person that is trying to harm them. The second a door swings shut and there's no draft, I'm moving the fuck out of my house. The cat can stay too. The ghost can have her. Question number eight baggage claim. Name a book or series that dragged. I have the perfect book for this. It was The Perfect Family by Samantha King. I finished it about a week ago. It's marketed as being a book about a woman with twins, 10 year old twins, and on their 10th birthday, a masked man breaks into their home and tells Maddie Castle, their mother, that she has to pick one twin to be shot. And then the book is about the aftermath of her decision because obviously it has devastating effects for her entire family, including the remaining twin. However, the book isn't really about that at all and it becomes very clear who the villain is early on in the story. I felt that the story dragged and one of the twins was very creepily fetishized in a romantic way that made me extremely uncomfortable. Question number nine, destination. What is a book or series that you could read over and over again? I'm gonna give you a series and then I'm going to give you a book because it's my fucking channel. So the series that I'm going to recommend is The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. I just produced a video talking about this book and how nobody is discussing it on BookTube or Instagram. It's literally the least hype book of the year and it's the best book of the year in my opinion. To be fair, I still haven't read the sequel, but I was so completely and deeply blown away by the calculating stars that I don't think that I wouldn't absolutely love the sequel as well. But I've been disappointed before and yet hope persists within me. And instead of getting into a description of the calculating stars, I'm just gonna link my video reviewing it below. A book that I want to recommend is my favorite book of all time. It is White Oleander by Janet Fitch. It tells the story of Astrid whose mother is a narcissistic poet imprisoned after murdering her boyfriend who rejects her. Astrid then is subjected to a long list of orphanages where her mother finds clever and manipulative ways to get her removed from healthy and stable homes every time. The book is about a mother's toxic love, Astrid's will, and her desperate desire to find someplace safe. I was only 14 when I read White Oleander, so I don't know if this book received a lot of hype and praise, but it definitely deserves it. And number 10 is Tag Your friends. So I am going to be tagging a friend below. I need to go through their channel and see if they've already done this tag because they might have. But I challenge you to tag somebody as well. This was a blast. Thank you so much Bookish Paradise for creating this tag and giving us the opportunity to talk about our travels. And as always, like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future videos and I will see you next time.